Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, a broadcast that will also air later today on the Noon Institute as well. It is a very important message. The King of the North has spoken. He has revealed his identity indirectly as it might be. And we're going to go into that in just a moment. As you can see in the background, we have Pope Francis there, a photo of him on an article from The Hill. Pope Francis, U.S.-Russia alliance, dangerous. But that's not exactly what he says that caught my attention. We've been sharing this with you for months. I've been very reluctant to say who the king of the north is because in Hebrew, the Melech means the king of the north or the king of the, the hidden king, you might say. One that is always mysterious. But keep in mind, even if Pope Francis were to be replaced with yet another pontiff, it doesn't mean that it's not the king of the north is not a Roman king. As always been believed by Jewish sages and rabbis from years gone by, this, the king of the north has always been referred to as a Roman Greco king or the king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is also in the book of Ezekiel is referred to the king of kings of the north as well. We have modern day Babylon or mystery Babylon written in the book of Revelation that clearly identifies Rome itself. She's got the cup in her hand. She's drunken uh, with, the, with the blood of the saints, which also goes with Obadiah's prophecy, chapter one, where the Pope of Rome actually historically broke all records and also fulfilled prophecy. We're going to go into that here in just a few moments here, but even if he's replaced, just like the king of England, if he dies off, another king takes his place. That's why in Rome, you normally the Pope has to die. Also, although we know Pope Benedict kind of really shook up the status quo. So there's two kings right now, two heads, you might say. Uh, so very interesting how this is going to play out here. But I've been saying to you for some time, and I'm going to go to the, the biblical passage on this, and then we'll jump back again to the king of the north here and what he says and what really caught my attention. Now, take a breath, Steve. Yes. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him or trouble him is a better way of putting that. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make, uh, take away many. In the King James, it says make away many, but it does take away is a better way of actually saying this. Uh, keeping in mind, as we look at Daniel, and I've shared this with you before from verses 39, coming all the way down to the very end here. This is Rome's war from the beginning. In verse 39, we see the coming together of the British Empire and the Roman Empire. They are the foreign gods that they're using there in order to strengthen the British Empire. They make an alliance together. They topple the Ottoman Empire. Why do they topple the Ottoman Empire? That is very critical. Most people believe that Israel was established in 1948. Completely fabrication wrong. It's not true. The state of Israel, the, or not, I shouldn't say the state of Israel, the state of Israel was, was established in 1948. The Jewish people began returning to their homeland in 1858, nearly a hundred years before the establishment of the Jewish state in 1948. And I'm still thankful of the establishment of the Jewish state. Don't get me wrong, even though the Rothschilds had their little dirty paws involved in that, I'm still glad that it became also to where the more Jewish people could come back to the homeland. Why? Because in 1858, under the evil Ottoman Empire, who was really greedy, looking for a way to be able to gather, gain more taxes, they couldn't get it from the peasants living down in what they called Palestine, modern day Israel. So they changed a law for the first time and allowed the Jewish people who did have money from Iran and Iraq, as we know it as modern days today, uh, even that of Turkey, they allowed them to begin to return to their homeland and purchase those lands there. And they did so in large tracts around the Galilee and down by modern day Tel Aviv. They began to buy these lands here uh, at the uh, uh, right there and, and, and fabulously begin to settle the land. They begin to do the agriculture there. Uh, although it was very tough for them, there was Arabs hated the fact that the Jews were coming home. Well, it wasn't just the Arabs that hated the fact that Jews were coming home. Rome heard about it and made an alliance with Britain 
got back in their good graces and as soon as they could get World War I started in the early 1900s, they attacked the Ottoman Empire in order to stop the Jewish immigration to their homeland. And in fact, what's interesting is they were migrating back home the way Abraham first came to the Promised Land, as a pilgrim, as a stranger in a strange land. And remember, Abraham wouldn't allow his kindred to just give him a plot of land in Hebron for a burial place for his wife. He purchased that land. And so under the Ottoman Empire, the Jewish people were doing exactly the way Abraham, their forefather, did. All right, so keep these things in mind. This is where our people truly began. The political side of the beginning of Israel had some dirty work in behind there because Rome's hand was involved in getting certain families into power. Why didn't they allow us to migrate back home during the Holocaust under the British mandate when the British mandate give us a promised land for the Jewish people, but instead six years the Jews were massacred in Europe while they brought as many Egyptians and Jordanians into the land in order to settle the land. All right, this is the whole point, guys. You're missing a big picture of how Israel really was formed. They did this intentionally so that they could control the politics of Israel, so they would make sure prophecy fulfilled the way that Rome wanted it to do. That's what's happening now. So back to the important part about the breaking news the pope of rome but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall have frightened him and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to to take away many so what did what did putin do what did trump do trump got out of line i guess the pope had to pull a little tighter on the choke collar to let him know that this is his kingdom that's being ran here and President Trump, I believe the man had great intentions, and I really applaud the fact that he took the time to try to make peace with Putin, but Rome doesn't want peace with Putin. And I've been wondering if Putin maybe is playing along with the plan, but you know, after seeing uh, what Putin did, and we'll go into that in a few minutes about doing a, a, an alternative route into Hamburg, Germany, let me know that he knows he's a target of, of the Roman Empire there of the European Union. All right, so what does the Pope say in this here, the hill? Here's what happens. Pope Francis issued a stark warning against dangerous international alliances, including between the U.S. and Russia on Saturday. Hmm. Well, you might say, Steve, that, that doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about the biblical prophecy? Watch what else he says. The Pope said that he was afraid of, quote, very dangerous alliances among powers that have distorted vision of the world. America and Russia and China and North Korea. Putin, Assad in the war in Syria. Everything the Pope is against, NATO has been battling. And when President Trump stepped out of line and didn't go along with status quo, the Pope got up. The King of the North, he let you know he's troubled about North Korea. He's troubled about Russia. He's troubled about China. Tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him greatly. And he will go forth to make away many. Now, here's what's interesting. Remember how President Trump, President Putin, talked about doing a cybersecurity alliance? Mm -hmm. Remember how Nikki Haley? Nikki Haley, by the way, you know Nikki Haley... She's the ambassador to the United Nations for America. She is part of the Trump cabinet. Good Methodist girl. You know, the Methodist church and the Catholic church have very strong cooperation together. No wonder why Miss Haley, immediately after Trump makes this alliance and says that, well, he took Putin's word for it, they weren't meddling in the elections. Miss Haley goes on record to let it know, yes, he was meddling in the election. All right, so let's take a look at some things here. So Troop, Trump, excuse me, not Trump, Troop, Trump, he goes like this. He's going to do this impenetrable cybersecurity, but we find out CNBC says Trump on his impenetrable cybersecurity unit with Putin. I didn't mean it. Hmm. U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted late Sunday that he didn't think his plan to create a cybersecurity with Russia would happen. That followed criticism of the cybersecurity plan as a Fox charge for the hen house scenario. Also, we know John McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham, too, 
both quick to just <laughs> pummeled him. They claim the very man that hacked U.S. politics, which I think is rather idiotic. The fact that Russia was for Trump over that of Hillary Clinton, I applaud the man. At least he didn't send in a whole team and publicly was known like Obama did to Israel. And by the way, it was said that Obama sent this team in trying to stop President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu from getting into power. Maybe he needed him in power. Maybe it was the other way around and we were only led to believe just the opposite. After all, Prime Minister Netanyahu has become very close friends with the Pope. Think about things, friends. It's not as it seems. So President Trump is already backpedaling, especially once the Pope spoke, the King of the North. This Russian article right here, another very interesting intel right here. Russia was at the NATO there, and they find out they're not making much headway. Let me read to you what it says here. In connection with the fact that North Atlantic Alliance is not turned to constructive dialogue and any discussions grow into accusations against the Russian side, the Russian Foreign Ministry decided to leave the temporary charge de affairs in Brussels after Alexander Glushko returned to Moscow. So Russia is not doing very well with NATO. Putin and his alliance with uh, President Trump has already been totally demolished by European leaders, by the Pope of Rome, and by President Trump's own administration and in his own party, everything. They're just pummeling this. And as I said, is Putin playing along with this? I don't think so. Here's why Putin's plane skirted NATO, NATO's eastern flank on approach to the G20 summit. He went 500 kilometers out of the way. Listen, if he was a game player, and I've been, I've really questioned if maybe Putin was a game player with the New World Order because of his meeting with uh, uh, Henry Kissinger, things like that, really troubled me, his relationship with Kissinger. But when a man has to fly 500 miles out of the way, making sure he doesn't go over any NATO country, he's not doing this for show. He's doing this as Lavrov, we saw the F-16, Polish F-16, come up there and try to take his plane out, not take it out technically, but harassing a foreign leader. So Russia is definitely not quite on their side as of yet. So we go into Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, everybody knows that Russia meddled in our elections, as I brought out. But remember, Nikki Haley, she's a good Methodist girl, right? What does it say here? Catholic and Methodist walking together in service to the world. Nikki Haley being a Methodist girl. Pope Francis said on Thursday that Catholics and Methodists have much to learn from one another as they work together in loving service to the world. And his word come, came in an audience with leaders of World Methodist Council, the Methodist Council of Europe, and the Methodist Church in Britain who are here, uh, uh, here, here for the opening of a new ecumenical center in Rome. You can learn a lot by those that are in power, can't you? Also, John McCain. You know what I find really fascinating about John McCain when I begin to put this broadcast together? In December 15th of 2011, he actually quotes from President Dwight D. Eisenhower about the dangers of the deep state of the military industrial complex. And he says it's worse than it ever has been. But you know what's so strange is John McCain, who a captain in the military, shot down war veteran, also comes from a family of four-star generals in his own family. Very much a military family. Not only that, an unhinging McCain calls for more war in Syria, says Russia is guilty of war crimes. This was on April 9th, 2017. And it's no different with Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, by the way, Governor Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, been in all types of politics, also uh, was decorated or raised to the level of colonel by former President Bush. And both these men are so embedded down with President, former President Obama, it's not even funny. And as I said, Obama, he's only part of that deep state. He's still the spokesman. He was there at the G20 summit before Donald Trump got there. He was there in Brussels before Donald Trump first met with Angela Merkel. It was 
former President Obama meeting with Merkel, before President Trump went and met with the Pope of Rome this year, it was who? Former President Obama in Rome as well. Why is Obama always appearing before everything that Donald Trump does? I think he's still running the nation for the King of the North. They're only allowing us as the people to think that we had a choice in our president. And President Trump, you know, they're pulling his chain pretty tight. Also, another news, just real quick before closing here, India and Pakistan as armies exchange heavy fire along uh, the Jammu Kashmir. Casualties have been reporting. There is fighting this. Our good friend Lorenzo and already happened there. Uh, he is showing... Uh, some of this fighting that is taking place there on the border uh, with India and Pakistan, both nuclear armed states there. Very troubling indeed to see this happening there. Only just another war. Huge rainstorms there happening in uh, Paris, France. They're showing here uh, a uh, showing the train station. The water is just flooding in there, as you can see on the screen and behind me here. Very troubling indeed. And, uh, and just before we close out, though, let me just remind you again, though, these prophecies that we were talking about already, Daniel, tidings out of the east and out of the north to trouble him. This is what the king of the north does. This is where the problem's been. I've been telling you this, guys, for months now. North Korea is nothing to do with the king of the north, nothing to do with east and, and the north. That's Russia and China. But North Korea is what's causing the king of the north to be nervous. Because why? The king of the north doesn't want the United States and Great Britain to get involved in a war with North Korea when he's busy trying to manufacture his prophecies inside of Syria. He didn't want Russia involved in Syria either, as he clearly says he doesn't like the alliance with Syria and Assad. Excuse me, Russia and Assad. But you know what? He's going to try to make that work to his advantage. He wants to bring Isaiah 17's prophecy in full view. He wants to take down Damascus. He wants to build a third temple in Jerusalem. And my Jewish friends, it will not be for the true Jewish people. But you know what, at this point here, any way we can warn the Jewish people, I think we need to do it. I really think we need to do it. And I can tell you now, friends, your help in making that happen is critical at this time. And you can do that. If you want to be a part of this and helping to get this out, and I'm working on a book now about these prophecies. They're unfolding so fast, it's not even funny there. But I'm trying to work on a book on this now about Daniel's prophecy, the king of the north, the things that are happening, the Pope of Rome. As I mentioned, and just in case this is the first time for you coming to this channel and listening, let me share something with you. And I encourage you, please share this with everybody you possibly can. All right, remember, look at, let's look at this real quick. Obadiah. Okay, Obadiah, when we're looking here at Obadiah, let me share this, and then we're going to jump over to Revelation real quick as well. But Obadiah, um, verse 16, For as you have drunk upon my holy mouth, and so shall all the nations drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and swallow down, and shall be as though they have not been. Pope Francis fulfilled this prophecy, part of the prophecy belonged to him, when it says right here, Okay, what is he saying right here? I only read that part because it's only a certain part applies. is masculine plural, all right? For as you have drunk, that's men only that have drunk al ha kodeshi upon my holy mountain, which if you go to verse 17, but in Mount Zion there shall be those that escape. See, Bahad Zion. So we know that the holy mountain is Mount Zion. So as these men only that have drunk upon God's holy mountain, which Pope Francis and his delegation drank with the local men there at the communion service, they were trying to reenact Jesus in the upper room there, drinking there in the communion room there, the Last Supper that is believed to be above King David's tomb. They drank this communion service. I don't have anything against the man that he did that. Pope Francis 
claims he's a Christian all right and he does a communion service in a Christian site but to me he was fulfilling prophecy and not in a good way either because then it goes on to say and all the nations will continually tamid continually drink they continue to hold communion services there on Mount Zion and when it speaks of the nations or the Gentiles in this case here it's the different churches and it's also gender inclusive both men and women and that's exactly what happened and that gender inclusive can also represent the fact of what because remember the church is a woman it could represent the fact that the different churches have come together having the communion which the Greek Orthodox etc also held communion there as well so the Pope fulfilled this right here but God says they shall continually drink and they shall be as though they had not been because he does not recognize them to be the true children of God although they have drunk upon God's holy mountain just like Judas now let me take you quickly over Revelation so you can see how this all fits together and there came one of the seven angels would have the seven vials and talk to me saying to me come hither I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters largest church in the world is the Catholic Church practically every nation in the world as far as I know many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication look at all the videos of all the world dignitaries that go to the Pope of Rome Putin was no different that's what made me suspicious but you know the Pope's never been to Russia no Pope has because they didn't conquer Russia as of yet same with China and by the way China still is not in the favor of Rome although they're trying that's why tidings out of the east now the north trouble him because he doesn't have them under control so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven head and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication upon her forehead was written the, the name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth what does it say in Ezekiel's prophecy the king of the north was who the king of Babylon the mystery Babylon is the Roman Empire you're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right now today right before your own eyes these things are happening the Pope of Rome says that he was afraid very dangerous alliances among powers that have distorted vision of the world America and Russia China and North Korea Putin and Assad in the war in Syria he was letting the American politicians and those in Trump's administration know get Trump in line now I hate to say that friend because I do believe that President Trump means well he's trying to bring about peace I know there's a lot of people don't like me saying that they say oh Trump's a Jesuit and everything but you know what Trump was bold enough to try to make an alliance with Russia I think the man at heart may be mean well and maybe he does mean well but the Pope is not going to allow him to do anything else stand with us with this ministry would you please we need your support visit our website israelinewslive.org you can donate there online or our address is at the end of the broadcast here you can send a donation by mail as well we thank you we love you your prayers I covet that more than anything because when you pray for us God does miraculous things that I can share with you Shalom